Welcome to Full Size Course in a Book, a step by step guide from scratch. This short and sweet video is for all of you who want to learn SAS from beginning to advanced. This is one of the best SAS courses on YouTube. So if you subscribe and like this video, YouTube algorithms will promote it and you can help others in no time. Let's start our topic. What is SAS? SAS, which stands for syntactically awesome style sheet is an extension of CSS that enables you to use things like variables, nested rules, inline imports and more. It also helps to keep things organized and allows you to create style sheets faster. The benefit of using SAS is that SAS is compatible with all versions of CSS. Number 1. Store data with SAS variables. One feature of SAS that's different than CSS is it uses variables. They can be declared and set to store data as variables similar to JavaScript. In JavaScript, variables are declared using let and const keywords. In SAS, variables start with a dollar sign followed by the variable name. Here is a real example. Let's say we need to use the success color green in different places without repeating its name. So we need to write good like this. So add dollar sign and then add success color as a variable name then add the color green. Now we can use this global variable in different places like this. So in our success class, we can set this color property to the success color variable. Then in our h3, we can set this color property to the success color variable. So this way, we don't have to repeat this color code or color name. Okay. Now we come to the most important part. How can we configure a source file in any project? Before doing that, we need to add a HTML file here. So in the body, we need to add a H3 and a success class. So to run this file, we have to install node. After installing the node, we have to go to this project folder. I'm currently on SAS course and type npm init. Just tap enter to skip these questions. So now we get a package.json file. Then we have to type npm install node sas to install the SAS library from the npm. Here is our node SAS package. So in this script we can delete this test and add our own script like scss type node SAS and then type watch to watch this file then main.scss which is our main SAS file and the output will be CSS folder. Now we can run this file. Just type npm run scss, which is our script name. So our node SAS is watching. Let's make some changes in the main.css to track this file. See, our main SAS file is converted to main.css in a CSS folder. So far, here is the final results with green text in a browser. One example where variables are useful is when a number of elements need to be the same color. If that color is changed, the only place to edit the code is the variable value. Number 2. Nest CSS with SAS. SAS will let you nest your CSS selectors in a way that follows the same visual hierarchy, which is useful, like so, without nesting. Let's say we have a footer with background color, black, put a UL list style none, put a UL list display flex. Let's see what happened after nesting. So footer, background color, black, and then we can add UL inside the footer braces. And after the UL, we can add list inside the UL braces. This way we don't have to write footer again and again. This is where nesting can help you to organize your code by placing child style rules within the respective parent elements. Number three, create reusable CSS with mixins. In SAS, a mixin is a group of CSS declarations, so we can reuse them in our style sheet. As you know, newer CSS features take time before they are fully compatible with all browsers. As features are adopted to browsers, CSS rules using them may need banner prefixes. As an example, box shadow property. So, without mixin, here let add a card class and width 500 pixel, height 500 pixel, border radius 10 pixel. And we need to add banner prefix for Chrome and Mozilla. And of course for Safari. And then we need to add our main box shadow property. 
Finally, to stand out the card, let's add a background color to Madhu. Here is the results. Now, let's see what's happened with mixing. So we write mixing box shadow with parameter like X, Y, blur and C. And then we use banner prefix like Chrome, Mozilla, Safari and then our real box shadow with this parameter. The definition starts with mixing followed by a custom name. The parameters like X, Y, blur and C in example of op are optional. Now anytime a box shadow rule is needed, only a single line calling the mixing replaces having to type all the banner prefixes. So we need to call mixing with the include directive. Have a look. Let's say in the card we need to add our box shadow with all banner prefixes. So without writing all the banner prefixes, we just need to include this box shadow and add our custom value like horizontal one pixel, vertical one pixel, and blah ten pixel, and use our custom color. Here is our results. See, this is the benefit of using mixing. This way, we can use this mixing in different places with different value. Use if else to add logic to your styles. In SAS, if else statement is similar to JavaScript. It's very useful to SAS when you search for a specific condition before applying any styles, like so. Mixing text color with parameters value. So, if value equals danger, our color should be red. Else, if value equals success, our color should be green. Else, our default color should be black. Now this is how we need to apply this mixing in different places. Like in our H1, we need to include this text color with danger parameter. So it will be red. Let's see this results. Now if we change this parameter to success, it will be green. Number 5. SAS loop. SAS has several loop options much like other programming languages. They include the for loop, each loop and while loop. These loops are an incredibly powerful tool for generating CSS code because it can defer code generation into an iterable task. Let's use 4 to create a SAS loop. In SAS, 4 is used two ways, start to end and start to end. The main difference between these two methods is that the start to end excludes the end numbers as part of the count and start to end includes the end number as a part of the count. Here is a start to end example. So we use for loop and start from i to 5 and then add this class text with hash and dynamically add this i. That's why we need to add object literal syntax. So you can add any value in this i iterator. And then in a code block we need to font size 10 pixel times i. So it will increase when we go through. So after convert it to plain CSS it will look like this. Like text 1 font size 10 pixel, text 2 font size 20 pixel, text 3 font size 30 pixel until we reach the last number which is 5. Let's see our results. In the HTML, let's add some paragraph with a class text 1, text 2, text 3, text 4, and text 5. So we'll see how it's grow. Here is our 5 text with 5 different values from value 10 to 50 pixel. Now let's see what's happened with start to end. So we have to write for loop and then take a iterator j from 1 to 6. And in the code block, we write that if we have a text class with 1 to 5, then our font size will increase 10 pixels for each iteration. Because in the start to end for loop, the last number will be excluded in case here is a 6. So we will have 5 iteration, not 6. Here are the results. Use each loop to map all items in a list. The each for loop make it easy to emit styles or evaluate code for each element of a list or each pair in a map. Once each iteration, the variable gets assigned to the current value from the list or map. So if you write code without map, it will look like this. So we write each color in red, green, yellow, and in the code block, we add dynamically color with the text class and then we need to change this color with dynamic value. Now let's see with map. So we take colors as a variables with color 1 red, color 2 green, color 3 yellow. And then we take each loop with key color in colors. And then in a code block we need to add this color dynamically with the text class and then add this color to this dynamic value color. 
you can see the map slightly different syntax just like JavaScript. So here the key variables is needed to reference the keys in a map. Both of the above code examples are converted into following CSS. Like if you have a red text, our color should be red. If you have green text, our color should be green. And if you have a yellow text, color should be yellow. So let's see in a real example. So in HTML, we add these two classes like red text or green text. Here is the results. Use while loop until a condition is met to apply a style. In SAS, there is no difference with the while directive compared to JavaScript. So first we take a variable and set it to one. Next, we check the condition with the while directive to create different size of text while i is less than 6. Make sure to increment i by 1 to avoid infinite loop after setting the CSS rules. So now we have to add these classes in our HTML. So we add these classes to text 1 to text 5. Here is the results. Number 6. Use partial to split the styles into smaller chunks. So a partial is a SAS file named with the leading underscore like partial, partial.css. The underscore lets us know that this specific file is partial and will not be generated into a CSS file. SAS partial are meant to be used with the import directive. This is a great way to group similar code into a module to it organized. For example, if all your text color is saved in a separate SAS file called underscore text color.scss and you want them in the main.scss. This is how to use them in a main task file. So we write import and add this color name or file name in a string or quote. Note that you don't need to specify the underscore and file extension in an import statement because SAS understand it is a partial. Once a partial is imported into a file, all text color, mixings and other bunch of code are available to use. Enough theory. Let's work with real world project. So we create a new folder called SAS and move our main SAS file in this SAS folder. And then we create a file here like textcolor.scss. And to make it partial, we have to add underscore before the file name. And of course, in this module, we can write any magic. We don't care. Finally, to import it to our main SAS file, we have to write import and file name textcolor. So to check it if it's work or not, in our HTML we have to write two classes like red tags, green tags. This styles comes from text color module, which is partial, right? And of course, before running this code, we have to change our script in package.json. So our main.css is not here anymore. It's in the SAS folder. So we have to change this to SAS folder. It will work because SAS knows that there is a main SAS file and it will convert this source file in the output folder like CSS folder. Now save the changes and we have to run this file again with npm run as CSS. And here are the results. Number seven, extends one set of CSS styles to another element. Extend is a feature of SAS that allows classes to share a set of properties with one another. For example, the below block of CSS rule style Dot card class, it has some properties like background color, width, and height. Now, you want another card called pop up card. It has the same properties just like the base card, but we need additional property in the pop up card. It is possible to copy and paste from the base card to the target card, but there is a much better way to do it with the extend directive. Have a look. Dot pop up card, extend dot card. So we extend the card class and then we can add additional properties like border radius, background color. Here is the result. As you can see, you can override styles in a base class to the target class by reassigning the values. Otherwise, we will have the same properties as base card as well as our additional styles. This is the complete SAS course on a book in 15 minutes. Wait, I have a personal message to you. Sadly, more than half of the viewers don't subscribe to my channel. So, if you share and like this video, my channel will grow and more people like you will get benefit from this video. So you can help others without any cost. Thanks for watching.